<clears throat> Good morning everyone, it's um, Sunday the 11th of February. This is a sole for a wood plate as you can see. It's one of those projects, <coughs> excuse me, that's been on the back burner for a little bit of time. Um, I've not done a whole lot of videos recently, a um, number of things. Um, there's been illness, there's been a new job, there's been um, other projects uh, getting progressed. I got a, myself, I've bought a pressure washer to um, try and unblock a, a drain, so it needs a uh, work. I, I mean, what do I mean to that? I need, I needed oil, had to buy oil and get the petrol organised and I also needed a, a hose for the um, the drain, you know, for jetting the drain, a jetting hose and um, I needed a, a connector to connect the water hose for, for the inlet to the pressure washer. So I've got most of that organised now, um, I still need to uh, get the, the old oil drained and replaced with the new oil. And that's that's another video really. So th there's been things going on. Um, the weather's been pretty poor, um, so I've not done anything outside really. So um, things like the shed have come to a standstill. Uh, I was speaking with a, an old uh, work colleague uh, yesterday, uh, who was inquiring about the three D printer I built and whether I ever got it finished. <laughs> And well, yes and no. It was finished, but and it was working to a degree, although it wasn't really extruding the uh, plastic very well. And I determined it was just a crap bloody nozzle. It had been a nozzle that the the guy uh, that I got some of the parts from had included in the uh, the box of bits, and he told me, "Look, it's a homemade nozzle." It's never really worked right, but you can, you know, it, it, it does kind of work. And you can use it until you get something better. Well, I wasn't able to get it to work uh, very well. So my prints were not coming out. So I've actually bought a new nozzle for the printer. Um, I've just not got around to fitting it. I'm calibrating it yet. You know, these things take quite a lot of time and... It's a, one of those footery little jobs that you get no enjoyment from, but is possibly needed to be done at some point. So anyway, um, on with uh, what you see in front of you. This is a, a basic uh, hand plane. Um, I bought this, I think it was last year sometime. I didn't pay much for it, I think it was just a couple of pound. I maybe even got it included in a, a sale of other tools, like a, an auction of a job lot of tools possibly. I, I don't really recall now. I wouldn't have spent much on it because I don't spend more than a, a fiver if I can help it on any one auction. And generally I don't buy single items eh, either, so... Uh, this was likely included in a a job lot. Now, when you get these job lots or tools, you know clearances from people's sheds and garages and barns, whatever, they're generally uncured for. Yeah, they've been left lying in a corner, or in some cases outside, and everything is seized. Everything is rusted, pitted, and uh, in generally poor condition. Now, in some cases, you can bring those tools back. It takes a bit of time and um, effort, a bit of elbow grease. And in, in some cases, it's not worth the bother because you can buy a replacement tool for the same sort of money. Um, but in other cases, you get stuff that's maybe a little bit older, better quality, not suffered too much wear or corrosion and uh, if you put a bit of time into it you can come out the other end with something that's uh, 
both, well, to my mind anyway, um, worth having. You know, it's, you know, people are throwing a lot of these, this stuff away now, of course, because you got electric planers and planer thicknessers and all these nice tools. But will they stand the test of time? I don't know. The good thing about these sort of things is you don't need power to get on with stuff. Uh, and that's really one of my focuses because while I do have a generator in my garage for powering my my power tools, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a nuisance. Uh, it's a bit of a um, hindrance, yeah, because you've got to get the jenny pulled outside because it's a you know petrol sorry it's a diesel generator, so it you know produces fumes, so you need it in a ventilated area. So you've got to have it, pull it outside, get the cable connected to it, get it started. Quite often the battery will be flat, so you need to change the battery over. I usually keep a spare battery charged in case of such, you know, just in, just for that reason. Um, and then of course, you know, every so often you've got to go and get diesel and just, ugh, it's a... It's no very convenient, you know. You guys that have got a power running to your garages and sheds, you're, you don't know how lucky you've got it. Um, now, I don't have the option to run power to my garage. It's not on my property, so I can't easily get power to it. Um, so, however, where there's a will, there's a way, as they say. And if something needs to be done, I, I can do it by hand, or I can get the Jenny out and get it done that way. Just depending on what's needing to be done. Uh, so, and besides, um, I get a bit of satisfaction from taking something like this and cleaning it and, you know, Painting it, oiling the bits that need to be oiled, and then you, at the end of the day, you've got a nice hand plane or whatever it may be. I restored this old hammer the other day. I don't know if you can see that. It's quite quite beat up. I get, you know I took all the rust off it, gave it a polish, gave the handle an oil. You can see the handle's well chipped. The head isn't in particular, you know, the, uh, the neck isn't in particularly good shape, it's kind of chipped there, but the wedge is half reasonable on it. So the head is uh, is tight, it's no loose. So, I don't need another hammer, it's just fucking, you know. That's another thing about buying a, a, a sort of, when you buy collections of tools or lots of tools in auction there's always bloody hammers in it it's just one of those tools that everyone has one or two off them so when you buy a lot or a collection of tools you'll always find one or two hammers the end result is i've got fucking tons of effing hammers now i've got more hammers than i will ever need but i'm reluctant to throw any of them away <laughs> So I give them a quick clean and a, an oil and I take the rust off them and I throw them in a box. So at least they're there for if I ever need need them. I don't need the, more than one or two hammers, a claw hammer, a mallet and a big heavy one for smacking shit away. Well, uh, you know, you'd be surprised as well. Um, you know, I, I needed a small ball pin there a few months back and I didn't have one. So I had to start looking for one and, you know, you'll, you'll buy one new quite easily. But they're, they're not, I want to say they're dear, but they're not cheap either. And the more hammers you collect you'll start to realise that there's a lot of different types of hammer out there. 
um, all sorts of different blacksmithing type hammers, leather working hammers, a uh, copper working hammers, all sorts of stuff. Now I, I'm, I've no need for all them. I don't do leather work and I don't do a lot of copper. Well, I've done no copper in fact. So there's a lot of them that, I, that I'll never need so I won't be buying them. But there's a lot of variety in, in the, the old hammer. Uh, so. But this is a, I think this was a record plane. Um, or well, it is a record plane. So it's a half reasonable one. It might be a Bailey maybe. I can't quite remember. Um, I've got the, all the other internal parts stored. So um, most of them have been already cleaned and um, some of them might need a bit of paint. I need to get a little tin of orange paint for um, paint in between the letters on the um, the clamp that clamps the um, the uh, cutting iron. You know the cutting iron goes down here like the so, and then there's a, a clamp that holds the cutting iron in place. And quite often on those um, clamps, there's a cast name for the company, be it Stanley or Record or Bailey or you know whoever is the manufacturer of that particular plane. So um, invariably it's yellow, sometimes blue. So they've got the um, the lettering highlighted in paint. You know the the casting is recessed around the lettering and the the lettering is raised and then polished. So the um, the the paint around the lettering and then they polish it so that it stands out. And it looks well, but the paint comes off over the years and then it, the the the, um, the chrome flakes off and it just doesn't look very nice. But um, you can bring the metal back, it's quite good quality of metal in it, so you can polish the metal up to a, a quite a high degree without chrome on it. Of course then you've got to lacquer it maybe, or uh, keep oil on it to stop prevent it from rusting in the future. Um, so it, it looks, you know, it looks good, and uh, I like doing it, you know. Uh, and at the end of the day, it'll be a, a tool that I may not use very often. I've got a Bosch electric planer, which I can use for roughing wood down with. And I've got intentions of buying a planer thicknesser, so that will give me a, a fast option to both rough wood down and to bring it to a finished size and a, with a high degree of finish. And then all that's left then is just a light sand to take the worst of the machine marks out. So the old hand plane is kind of gone the way of the dinosaur. It's obsolete in a lot of ways. But there's all, even today with all these battery packs and uh, portable generators, there's still a need for having tools you can use without power uh, that don't require batteries or extension cords and if they're maintained they'll work almost as good as your uh, power tools uh, you know certainly there's a bit more effort involved but they're also I, I fairly you know they're fairly light in comparison to a lot of your power tools and um, so you know the swings and roundabouts not as fast though, and that's in, that's the important thing in a in a workplace. You know, you can't uh, do a job as fast, so that means you're losing money. So they, they they're not accepted in industry anymore. Um, but for the the average guy at home. You can pick them up cheap and they'll do the job. So, why spend 100, 200 pound on something that you'll use once or twice? You know, like say a circular saw or a planar thicknesser. When the 
old hand plane will do the job and only cost you a couple of quid. So yeah, I'm just rambling on here today folks. It's a bright Sunday morning. I think it was the 11th of, this day of February 2018. Um, I just... There always seems to be something else to do. I, I never seem to be done. Of course, when I sit on the computer, hours, days can disappear in front of that infernal machine. <laughs> but it's fun too, so what do you do? One thing I've learnt is you can't do it all, you know. I can do anything, but I can't do everything. Yeah, I can do anything, but I can't do everything. Just not enough time in the day. I'm toying with the idea of buying a welder lately. I've um, I've always wanted a milling machine, okay, and. I looked at buying a little door Westbury and I looked at buying a milling attachment for the lathe and for their functionality they're quite expensive. Uh, I found a half completed door Westbury in air for 180 quid but the guy's reluctant to ship it so and I'm not going down there for it so. I've been looking at the, a more expensive machine as a result, um, an Optimum MB4. They're about two grand. Eh? I really didn't want to spend that on a small milling machine. Um, ideally, if I had the space, I'd go for a bridge port. You know, they're they're relatively compact and very versatile. Um, but I don't have the room for one, so. Uh, maybe later in life. So the optimum is a nice balance between functionality and size compared to the likes of the door Westbury or attachments for your lathe. But it's just the, the price point is a bit high for my liking. Um, especially as I probably won't be using it in any sort of uh, business sense. It'll just be as a hobby for making parts for the lathe or for the mill or just for the garage in general. Now I'm nearly out of time folks, I've got a couple of minutes but um, the reason I'm wanting the welder is I need to be making a, a well I don't need but I want to make a table for the um, milling machine before I get around to buying it. So uh, you know, I've got a place to put it when it arrives. But um, I think that's enough of me rambling for one day. Um, I'm going to try and get the printer up and running again shortly. Seeing that the weather's stretching out, you know, the nights are stretching, and I've got sheds to build and logs to cut, and just a thousand and one chores, you know. So we'll see what happens there. Eh? Um, and I've got less time now because of work but at least I've got a bit of money coming in I can afford to pay the bills um, I've got options now again but I'm not going to give up on restoring uh, stuff like this because I just enjoy it too much so um, yeah that's 19 minutes 20 seconds the recording cuts off at 19, eh, sorry, 20 minutes. And uh, I'll maybe give you a, a heads up on some of the projects I have completed in my next video. So, if you're watching, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Not that I've, my channel's that popular that I make any money off it, but I do try. I uh, haven't had any payments yet. So, um, take care everyone, be safe and be happy. Bye for now.